Hey everyone, Piano Man Chuck here, and what I have with me today is the Roland Cube Street EX, which is one cool PA. It is 50 watts of power, and not only is that 50 watts of power when plugged into your AC mains, it's also 50 watts of power when running on eight AA batteries. I mean, that, that is so cool. That is one feat of engineering. Unlike other battery-operated PAs that Roland has produced in the past, where you get more power when you're plugged into the AC mains and a little bit less when you're running on pen light batteries or AA batteries, this one gives you 50 watts of power whether you're plugged into the AC mains or running on batteries. That is so cool. I don't know how they did that but they did it. So kudos to Roland for that. That is really an accomplishment and a feat of engineering right there. All right, so let's go over some of the things that this does. All right, you got 50 watts of power, which is 25 watts per side. This is a stereo amp, so you got 25 watts per channel or per side, left and right. And you've got two 8-inch woofers and two 2-inch two tweeters. All right, now you've got three modes here. You've got an eco or an economy mode where you've got 10 watts of power, 5 watts per side. You've got a normal mode where you've got 25 watts of power, 12 and a half per side, or the maximum where you've got 50 watts of power, 25 per side. Now, there is a lot of times where you don't need that full 50 watts, and if you don't need that, why waste your battery power? Put it on one of the lesser modes, and you're going to last a lot longer. Now, this case, it's solid, and it's sturdy. It's made of ABS injection molded plastic to keep it light. It's about 16 pounds. How cool is that for 50 watts? Really cool. Now, here's the problem. Each input here has its own volume or gain. There's no master volume. All right, so that may or may not be a problem for some of you. The first two inputs are mic inputs or guitar inputs. They're combo jacks. They can be XLR or quarter inch and they're switchable between mic and guitar right that, that doesn't mean you're limited to that you can hook up any other quarter inch studio equipment like keyboards to that too all right so you're cool over there the problem is the first two inputs are the only ones that have tone or eq you got a three band eq on each one of these bass middle treble on each one of those two inputs so on the remaining inputs which you've got over here line in left and right there is no EQ or tone so if you're plugging in a keyboard which is recommended for the line in unless your keyboard has tone or EQ you are stuck with what you're plugging into this with and basically if you're doing that this thing falls a little bit short on the bass and a little bit too tinny on the high. So you need that EQ. If you're plugging in an MP3 player or something else with your smartphone or tablet or whatever, going to the audio input, which is a eighth inch stereo mini jack, same thing. You've got that volume control, but you don't have EQ or volume. And it's going to be a little bit short on the bass and tinny on the treble. So whatever you're using as a sound source, you better have some kind of EQ or tone control there. Otherwise, it's going to sound short on the bass and tinny on the treble. All right, so that's the shortcomings of this amp. Now, other than that, this is one heck of an amplifier. Now, the first two channels, the first channel has reverb control. The second channel has a 
reverb and chorus and delay. It also has Cosm amps and with those you have lead, clean, crunch, acoustic, guitar. You also have a tuner here so you can tune your guitar with this. How cool is that? Now you got foot pedals to control whether you're using channel 1 for reverb or channel 2 for reverb or chorus delay. You can turn each one of those on or off with separate foot pedals. Now, like I said, without the re without the tone or EQ controls, the bass is a little bit lacking. You have the bass there, it's just a little bit lacking without the tone or EQ controls. And the treble or the highs, you have the capability of sounding really good, it's just a little tinny without having tone or EQ controls. So what a lot of people have been doing, and I got this from some of the forums online, they are replacing the built-in 8-inch woofers with Jensen's. They're using the Jensen Mod 8-20, which is a 20-watt 8-inch 4 to 8 ohm speaker. They're claiming it has fuller sound, it's lighter weight, it's about $35 to $45 each. So you're talking about $70 to $90 to upgrade this to the Jensen's. But it might well be worth it because not only do you get an upgrade in the sound quality, they each weigh about a pound less than the speakers that they're using built into this Roland Street Cube EX. So you're going to get about two pounds less. Instead of weighing 16 pounds, this is going to weigh 14 pounds. Now, let me go over the cons. I mean, there's a lot of positives to this but there are also cons. Let me go over the cons. There's no master volume. In other words, if you want to bring the volume up of everything that's plugged into this, the only way you're going to do that is by bringing up the volume of each separate input by itself. There is no master volume. And like that, there's no master tone EQ. In fact, the tone EQ is only on the first two channels. So if you want to bring up the EQ for the entire mix, you have to do it only on the first two channels. The other two channels, you've got to do that with the instruments that are plugged into that. So if you're a keyboard player, you should have a keyboard that has EQ or tone right there on the surface. Otherwise, you're going to have to go through a menu which may or may not be a problem for you. And then there's other keyboards that don't have tone or EQ at all. If that's the case, you probably don't want to consider this unless you plug your keyboard into the first two inputs. Then you have control. All right. But if you're going to do that, then you don't have mic inputs. You don't have guitar inputs. All right. Now, the tilted design, which is... It's really cool if you're going to use this as a stage monitor, but personally, I think that tilted design is a mistake. You have another or other Roland products, which, you know, they're, they're straight, but they have a mechanism in there where you can manually tilt it. So that's a better way of implementing this thing. But by having it tilted like this, it's really bad because if you're going to put this on a speaker stand, you can't have it tilted like that. So instead what they do is they have the speaker stand mount right here on the side so you're turning it like this rather than like this. So turning it vertically like that, the speakers are now all vertical. Now, when you have it like this, you've got stereo separation left and right. That's the way your ears are designed. Left and right, horizontal. You turn this up vertical, you lose that separation. Bad design right there. So that's the cons right over there for that. All right. And other than that, this is a pretty cool amp. All right, let me go over all the knobs and inputs and 
things like that. All right, so when we're looking at this from the top view, this is what we're looking at. Let's go from left to right. All right, starting on the left, you've got a thing over here. This is the mic slash instrument section. And underneath that, you've got the equalizer, bass, middle, and treble. And you also have a reverb. And underneath that, you've got a combo jack, which can accept quarter inch or TRS. And you've got a switch to tell it what instrument you're using, whether you're using a guitar or a mic. Then you have a volume or, or a gain control. All right. Next over to the next section, labeled mic slash guitar. Got a little bit more control over here. Not only do you have the three band equalizer like you have on the first input, you also have your reverb just like the first input, but in addition to that you have a chorus and delay. All right? And in addition to that, you have a cosm effect section and you also have a tuner so you can tune your guitar which is a really cool thing to do and going into the next section audio in which is an eighth inch stereo mini plug you can use it with your mp3 player ipad or tablet or smartphone or whatever have you to the right of that you got a battery checker you push the button, it tells you whether it's full, half, or low. So you can check the status of your batteries, which is a really cool thing. Below that, you've got line in, quarter inch, left or right, or both. If you're using the left, it's a mono, just like pretty much any other setting. And you have the volume or gain control for that as well. You have your power switch next to that. And above that, you have your output power, which is three different powers you can have eco or economy mode which is basically 10 watts five watts per side left and right you have normal mode which is 12 and a half watts per side for a total of 25 and you have max which is 50 watts or 25 watts per side all right now going over the rear section over here let's start from left to right got your dc input so when you plugged into the mains you got a little brick that goes between the mains and here and then it plugs into here you got your 12 volts there headphones can plug in to the next jack over there aux in this is a quarter inch stereo aux in which is really cool. I don't see that on too many things, but they have that. Then you have your line outs, left and right line outs, so you can feed that to front of house if you're using this as a monitor, or to your recording equipment, or to a PA, or whatever. But be advised that these volumes affect the line out. It's not a true line out, which gives you line out no matter what everything is set to no nope, it's affected by the individual volumes of everything else all right now foot switches those are really cool because the first two sections like i said earlier you've got reverb capability and on the second section you've got not only reverb but you've got delay and chorus and all that stuff well the foot switches that hook up to each one of these you can control whether you have that on or off for each section. Very cool thing. Now, let's see what this sounds like. I've got a keyboard hooked up to the line inputs over here. So I've got it in eco mode right now. And I've got about a quarter of the volume. Pretty cool. Remember, this is just quarter of a volume. If I go all the way, that's pretty loud. Let's go back to quarter. 
and switch over to normal mode. Again, that's quarter volume. Let's go all the way full volume on normal mode. A lot of power there. Let's go back to quarter volume and switch over to max mode. A lot of power there. Let's go over to full volume. Amazing how much power this thing actually has. I mean, you can take this to a gig, and if you've got a hundred people or maybe a little bit more, no problem. This thing will deliver, no problem at all. Let's go back to quarter power. Now, the only drawback, like I said, if you're a keyboardist and you're using the uh, line ins here for keyboard. <laughs> Unless your keyboard has tone or EQ controls built into the front or through some menu or whatever, it's the bass is there, but it's lacking unless you have those tone or EQ controls built into your keyboard. The treble there, it's a little bit tinny, but again, unless you have the tone or EQ built into your keyboard, you cannot control that. So let me demonstrate here again. Let me move those. So the first two inputs, okay, let me go back to economy mode. Alright, that's pretty much flat, but if I want to add more bass, So I have a lot more control over what my sound sounds like if I'm a keyboardist. All right, really cool. But again, if you're going to use your keyboard on the first two inputs, you lose the ability to plug in a guitar or a mic. So if you're going to be playing with other people who are guitarists or singers, or maybe you are a keyboardist and you are also singing, you've got a mic, this isn't going to work. You're going to have to go back to the line in section. And hook your mic up to one of these two. Alright, so that's the drawbacks. And again, no master volume, no master EQ or tone control. So if you've got a bunch of instruments hooked up to this, mics, guitars, keyboard, and you've also got your audio in hooked up as well, there is no way to increase the master volume of everything. You have to use the individual gains for each individual input to increase the entire thing. Otherwise, this is really one awesome amplifier. I can't recommend this highly enough. And I've got a Roland KC-110, which is awesome by itself, but unlike this, you have a master volume and you have master tone, which is nice. But this does things a little bit different, and depending what you're looking for, either one is going to suit you fine, but if you need the power, this is the one and the price they're asking for this, yeah, it's expensive, but for what this does at 50 watts, I mean, it just blows people away. It blows me away for the amount of volume it produces on eight AA batteries. Unreal. Anyway, hope this helped you out. Piano Man Chuck, peace out. Thanks for watching.